It is officially spooky season and I am so excited. So today I am sharing a ton of tips, tricks, and budget-friendly DIYs to help you get that spooky and cute look just in time for Halloween. This is Whiskey and Whip, my name is Whitney, and on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor, so if you love that too, hit subscribe so we can be craft buddies. Also wanna thank my friend Courtney from Creative on the Cheap, who I'm collabing with on this video, so be sure to check out the description after this so that you can head over to her video and see some more fun Halloween DIYs. We're gonna kick it off with this super easy back garland and the secret sauce here is that you need a dowel needle. So I am using these felt shapes from Dollar Tree but you could also cut out your own bats out of felt. When you go to string them up, make sure that your jute twine is behind the bat and I'm using that dowel needle which is long and sharp to get through there. So then that way I can string it up so fast. This thing came together in under five minutes and just enough spooky but oh so cute. Number two are these fun spell books that you could easily use to communicate your personality and your decor. You guys know I love tongue in cheek and fun personalized decor. So I'm taking these three hardcover books from Dollar Tree and you wanna make sure you get the hardcover ones. They're just easier to paint. Paint the spine and the entire outside with some black chalk paint. I also went through and did the edges of the white and the blue book just so it wouldn't stand out. Then I'm taking a makeup sponge and just dabbing on some gray paint. You can also go over the top with a little bit more black paint if it's too much distressing, but I liked it and made it look kind of weathered. And then I took a white paint marker and just wrote on what I wanted. So I did spells and potions and then also broom care. Just thinking about some fun books that might be in a witch's library. What I love about these is you can put them either horizontally or vertically. You could display them as one book or multiple books and make as many as you want for your space. Number three is this spider web rug that I made last year inspired by TikTok. You're gonna want some sort of rug from Dollar Tree. You can use what you can find. I ended up doing this black mat. I flipped it over and used a white chalk marker to do a half circle or a half oval, I guess. And then I started drawing lines out from the center to create my overall spider web shape. In between each of the lines jutting out from the center, I made a little semicircle that allowed me to have a rough plan of where to cut. Once that was all cut, I gave myself a really nice outline and then I added some more lines with just a regular paint marker. This wasn't bright enough for me, so I went back through with some white acrylic paint and a detailed brush just to kind of make everything pop a little bit more. You could also go back through and add a spider if you would like, but when you're done, you're gonna wanna seal it so it doesn't rub off and I used a spray clear satin sealer from Minwax. And if you're putting it on a floor like this, I would suggest adding some hot glue to the back so it doesn't slip. You guys know I love my printables, so I've got a Halloween pack for you waiting over on my blog. One of my favorites out of that pack is this Witch Starter Pack. It's got the watercolors, all the different elements. It is super fun. I decided to essentially mount it here on a Dollar Tree clipboard. I like the look of this. It gives you a little bit more of an organic look compared to a frame, but you could easily frame these as well. Another thing I love to put on those clipboards for Halloween is this Hocus Pocus script. I took one of my favorite scenes where they go to the road and realize it's not a babbling brook. I just typed it up with a typewriter font, printed it out, put it right on to the board, and it was ready to go. I also have a ton of options for square signs as well as these small three by five signs that Dollar Tree also sells. So head over to my blog and you can check that all out and download all of them. If you're watching this video right after I went up, I'm actually with Courtney right now in Colorado. A big group of us YouTubers, we did Salem last year. We are in Colorado right now. So be sure to head over to my Instagram so you can see everything that is happening on the trip. I will link all of that down below. And also be sure to head over to Courtney's story because I'm sure she'll be sharing stuff as well. Another way to use printables is to create your own stickers. And this is a really easy way to customize a candle. So I used some printable vinyl or you could use sticker paper to print out this square free printable. This will also be available over on my blog. Now you're gonna wanna measure before you print it out to make sure it's gonna fit your particular candle. I'm using one from Walmart that I found last year because I really liked the smell and I liked that it was black. I ended up just laminating it with some 3M laminating sheets and then peeled off the back, stuck it to my candle. This is a great way to subtly commemorate a favorite Halloween movie in your decor. 
Now, this spooky pumpkin was actually inspired by something I saw in store. I forgot to take a picture, but this is one I found online, and it was this bat pumpkin. I decided to take a foam pumpkin from Dollar Tree because, you know, it was much cheaper. I painted one white and one black, and then I transposed the colors for the stems. Then I found a bat file on Cricut Design Space that I cut out on just some cardstock that I got from Michaels, and I did a variety of one inch all the way up through five inch bats. Just taking some hot glue and applying it to my white pumpkin in an array to make it look like the bats are kind of flocking around the pumpkin. Super easy, you can get creative with it. And then I just put it on top of a thrifted candlestick that I painted matte black. Now for the ghost one, I did the exact same thing, a variety of different sizes of white ghosts cut out on cardstock, stick them on with hot glue, and this is so fun. You could do it with skeletons, spiders, really, the sky's the limit, and they're so cute. These spooky faux candles are another favorite from last year, and I made these out of a plunger handle because I like the size of the wood piece. Now, if you can't find plungers or you wanna do a bunch of these, I would recommend getting some dowel rods from your local hardware store. It will be cheaper, but you could also use these plunger handles. Starting by getting rid of the little nubs on the ends of each piece, and then I am cutting a range of sizes from four inches all the way up to nine inches to get the size I want. Now I ended up needing two plungers for this project and once I gave it a good sand it was time to give it a faux stain look. So this is just black acrylic paint mixed with some water. I'm putting it on and then wiping it off just like you would a stain and that's going to allow you to still see that wood grain and have it look kind of rustic while being spooky. Now for our flames, obviously because it's wood, we can't have real flame. So I'm taking a silicone mat with my hot glue gun and just drawing out in hot glue a shape of a flame. Once those have cooled and hardened, you can peel them right off your silicone mat. You could also do that on parchment paper. If you don't have a silicone mat, that will release it as well. And I'm taking a golden paint marker as well as a paintbrush to buff in that color so it looks like a flame. Now to attach the two, I'm adding a decent amount of hot glue to the top so you kind of get that shiny glue look so it looks like a flame as well as melted wax. Stick on your flame. And then I decided to go around the outside with a little bit more hot glue to make it look like it had been burning for a while and it was dripping. Final step is to tie them together with some jute twine. And if you're afraid that they're gonna move on you, you could also hot glue them together, but I like to be able to reposition them if I need to for different vignettes. I could break them apart or put them together. All in all, this is a rather easy project, but it adds such a fun bang for your buck. And I haven't seen anything like this in the store, so I like that it feels custom. It was about this time last year that I started wearing my candy corn earrings that I wore in this intro, and you guys loved it, so that inspired this garland. I grabbed the three colors that you find in candy corn and decided to make a tiered tassel. Starting with my yellow, I wrapped it around an object. This is just a Dollar Tree circular wood piece, but you could use cardboard, really whatever you have. I wrapped it around 40 times and then I cut the piece, peeled it off or slid it off, I guess, and then tied the top to start my tassel, just using a scrap piece of yarn to do that. Once that was tied, I did the same thing with my white and orange yarn. Then we're going to cut the bottom part of our loops so that it is open, as you see here. We're gonna do that with the yellow as well as the orange and lay the orange directly on top of your yellow. Then we're gonna take the yellow little string pieces that we had left over and wrap it around the orange so you can tie them together. We're gonna to stack them one on top of the other. It's gonna look like Cousin It, but then you're gonna shake it out and do any trimming that you need to do. Then we're gonna repeat the same step with that same orange piece of yarn so that they're all tied together the same way. Make sure everything is down in the right direction, give it any haircuts that it needs, and then give the top a tie with a piece of white yarn. That's gonna create the top of your tassel, and then you're gonna have your candy corn colors hanging out the bottom. Now to complete the look, I grabbed these fun little treat sacks. They are canvas and they tie at the top. So I wanted to make them into kind of little pennant banners. So I cut off the jack-o'-lantern face from the front and created a little loop on the back to hang them with some hot glue and a little highlighter. I just looped it over the highlighter to leave that space open and I'm just doing a dab of hot glue to create this opening so then when I go to hang them up, I can just string it right through that opening. I started with three wood beads that I love the size from Amazon. This is what I use all the time, I'll link it down below. I added my jack-o'-lanterns, some additional ribbon just to fill it out, and then finally my candy corn tassels. And the pops of yellow and white really make it sing. 
Another fun way that you can use jute or yarn for Halloween is to create some spider web signs. Now I used these pieces of art that come on a faux canvas just because I wanted the square piece on the inside. You could easily use an eight by 10 or five by seven canvas and do the exact same thing. Once your outside is removed, take some black or whatever color you want, paint, paint it, and then we're gonna use a staple gun, but you could also use a regular stapler because these outsides aren't real wood, they're MDF, so you'll be able to staple through with just a regular office stapler. Start to do some overlapping here to create the look of a spider web. And once you have all of the intertwining pieces that you want, tie on another piece and start to weave it in and out around your other pieces to create the look of a spider web. Now the great news is this doesn't have to be perfect. The more off the better, I think, because it looks spooky and just kind of ominous. On the black frame, I used jute twine, and then on my frame that I just left natural, I used black twine. These are awesome on their own, but you could also use them in a vignette to stage behind something else. You guys know me, I love myself some garland, so here's another idea, here's a fun one to use some burlap. So grab yourself some of these create your own ornaments, you could do this for fall or Halloween, paint them the colors of your choice, I did ghosts, jack-o'-lanterns, and witches hats, and then get some thick burlap. Now you can use Dollar Tree burlap, but I like this from Hobby Lobby, it's just a little bit thicker, you can also get it at Michael's. Lay out your burlap and create a faux needle and thread on your jute twine by just taping the ends and then you're going to feed it through the holes of the burlap in a crisscross pattern. So go to the right, cross over to the left, to the right, to the left, and continue throughout your whole piece. As you start to pull the jute twine through the burlap, it's going to start to gather up like this and that's how you're going to get the fun rustic look. Then when I hung it up, I just added some black and orange, very Halloween feeling ribbon to any of the openings. I just tied it right on the jute twine. And then I'm also using that jute twine to hook on all my little ornaments. And this was ready to go. I recommend to assemble your garlands where you're gonna put it. That way you know that it's long enough and you can fluff and make it look great as you go. These type of signs first made their appearance last fall and I loved it and I'm so glad they keep bringing it back season after season. So for these you can use either the chalkboard pumpkin signs that they have this year or they have this natural wood look as well. I have a bunch of different free files that I will have in the pack over on my blog for you. All the information will be down in the description, but you can cut these out to 11 and a half inches tall and you could do Happy Halloween or this other Adams Family one that I have for you. I'm just applying it with my Expressions Vinyl Clear Transfer Tape. I like this because even though it's not as low tech as the paper transfer tape that I preach about all the time, it's still not super, super sticky, so it's going to work really well for you. This Happy Halloween is super fun, but I also love this Adams Family one. The SVG will have an opening so you could add at the bottom the Johnson Family, the Smith Family, so instead of the Adams Family you can customize it to your own. This little jack-o'-lantern patch is so fun to put together. And it's made up of these wood pumpkins that are a staple every year at Dollar Tree. Now for this particular size, you're going to need two pumpkins because you can get two of the smaller ones out of a large one. I'm starting by cutting them kind of in half. It doesn't have to be perfect because you want a variety of heights. And then I'm taking a sanding block, getting rid of the glitter on the front, and then using a heat gun to get rid of the sticker on the back. Then I'm painting all four of my pieces on all the sides with some orange Waverly chalk paint. This is the color of pumpkin. Now, as you have noticed, I did pop out the top of the two top pieces. So the little stem is gone and we'll replace them in just a second. Once I had the arrangement that I wanted, I hot glued them together and you wanna make sure that your bottoms are all even so that it will stand up on its own and not be wobbly. And now you can customize with whatever faces you want. I like to pull up some images to go from. So this is just Pinterest. It helps me to draw when I can see something. I'm not very good at winging it. So when I see something, I can pretty much replicate it, which is nice. And then to replace my stems, I'm just taking four of these little blocks, also from Crafter Square at Dollar Tree, putting some antique wax by Waverly on it, wiping it off. And then they look like they're little stained pieces of wood. Pop those over the top of the holes and the other two pieces, add some jute twine, and you are good to go. This is also a great thing to do with grandkids or kids because they can draw the faces on themselves. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know I love Hocus Pocus, and I've got a ton of other videos just jam-packed of projects, but here are a couple of my favorites. 
I grabbed one of these ceremony signs from Dollar Tree, painted it black, and then added this free file that I have for you over on my blog. It says the world famous Sanderson Apothecary, Salem, Massachusetts. It looks super good with my little Pop Funkos, and it's as easy as applying a decal to a painted surface. Super easy. Another really easy project is number 13, which is this black flame candle. Grab yourself a black candle from Dollar Tree. They've got a ton right now for Halloween. Lay it out, measure, and cut out a decal. This one is another free one. It says, let's light the sucker and meet the old broads. It's what Max Dennison says when they're in the witch museum in the movie Hocus Pocus. I cannot wait for the Hocus Pocus 2 movie to come out. And yes, I will be doing another Hocus Pocus video this year. So make sure you're subscribed and your notifications are turned on because that will be coming your way soon. Last year, I really needed a spooky vase for a setup, so I decided to try to dye it. I took some Mod Podge and put it into some Solo Cups, and then I also mixed that in with some black food coloring. Once I whipped it up with a spoon, I poured the solution into my jar, and I ended up adding just a little bit of water to the solution so that it was a little bit runnier so it would get on the jar. You just want like a splash of water, nothing crazy. Then I took some tumbling tower blocks and laid them out on some foil on a baking sheet so that I could take these jars and bake them. Here is the oven information and timing that you're going to want to do. And I ended up also doing one with some brown food coloring. I was hoping that it would look more like amber glass, but this worked out just fine. The Mod Podge and the food coloring still dyed it this color and it was pretty to add some fall foliage. And this black one also with the runs add a little bit of spooky action, super cute and spooky at the same time. Another fun Hocus Pocus project, especially if you're hosting a watch party this year, are these Hocus Pocus coasters. These are all files that I printed out as four x four photos at Walgreens, and then you can just apply them to your coasters. Now you can use Dollar Tree coasters, but they sell each coaster for $1.25. You can get these tiles, these four x four white coasters at Home Depot for like eight cents a piece. So it's much cheaper to go that route. Add some Mod Podge, put your piece down, seal it with some Mod Podge, let it dry, it will dry clear, and then we're just adding some square pieces of felt to the back four corners so it doesn't scratch your table. These are all ready to go and they would be the perfect addition to your watch party for Hocus Pocus 2. Another thing I love for every season are throw pillows, so this ghost one is no exception. I took some white felt, and this is a long sheet from Dollar Tree. I folded it in half, and then I folded it in half long ways so that I could double it up and get a symmetrical ghost shape. Once I cut it out, I opened it up, did any touch-ups that I needed, and then it was time to glue it together. So I started on one side, went around the outside, added some hot glue and pressed it down. And I did that all around the outside until I had just an opening big enough for me to stuff my pillow. Then I took my hand and pulled it inside out so that you had seams instead of just having the frayed edges. And then I used that opening to stuff it with polyfill. You can use an old pillow, whatever you have on hand to stuff it, really anything fluffy will work. And then I folded the edges down and glued it shut. The last step is to get creative and add a fun face. I did two eyes and a mouth, but you could do whatever you want on the front of this cute little ghost and you're ready to style it. I also love this witch's hat. I took a big piece of black fabric because I didn't have felt big enough. And this fabric is just from Walmart, so still very affordable. I did a hand drawing of a witch's hat on to two pieces so I could double it up and have two of the same. And I did the same process as the ghost by gluing around the outside to create a seam. Then we're gonna pop it inside out and some of my seams popped so I ended up just fixing it with hot glue adding some stuffing to get it all the way up to the top and gluing it shut. Now it looked a little blah, so I added some white yarn and a doll needle and I just kind of weaved in and out of the fabric to create a spider web. I started in the center and had lines radiate out from the center. And then I started going through and doing the outside and then I did the inside to create my spider web. Here you can kind of wing it because spider webs aren't perfect, but this added just the umph that I needed to my witch's hat. 
When I was done, I tied it off and this thing is super cute. And the little cobweb is the perfect addition. And I also made this Hocus Pocus pillow that I absolutely love. I used a Dollar Tree tote bag as well as a pillow insert. I had this in my stash for a long time. This was my late grandma's. And so I thought it would be perfect to fit into this bag. I inherited some of her craft stuff and I just was waiting for the right time to use it. And I thought this was a great time. I just took the ends of the bag and glued it shut just like it was a present. Pretty easy peasy. And that's going to be the bottom so you won't even know. Once that was glued down, I took a variety of pieces of felt and cut out a template for myself. I just sized it. This is a Google image file. I cut out all of these and then I traced them on the respective colors of felt for Winifred, Sarah, and Mary Sanderson so that I could then take the felt pieces and glue them right to my pillow. I also screen printed the one to the left, so I will link that video down below if you're interested in seeing how that came together as well. But this is a super easy one to put together and it's the image that you see that you know it's Hocus Pocus. We've made it to project 19, so if you're still with me, be sure to leave me an emoji or a comment down below on what's your favorite part of Halloween. Now we're gonna take these little bird houses that you can find at Dollar Tree in their craft section and create little haunted houses. I started by doing the whole thing in white paint just to have a neutral slate to work with. And then I got creative with a variety of pieces of Halloween scrapbook paper. You can also do something similar with fabric if you want to Mod Podge that on. But I'm just using the houses to trace these pieces and have them fit the house. I used an X-Acto knife and some paint markers to add shingles, roofing, different colors to the back and fronts of the house and then I added some windows and doors and they made a super fun little spooky cottage village. Now if I were to do these again I might actually stain the birdhouses because I think it would look cool with the dark wood coming through as well but it goes really cute with my Sanderson's Witch Museum that I made over in my Hocus Pocus video last year so if you like that be sure to check out that video. And project number 20 are these really fun beaded garlands. You could do a variety of different ways. You could use just regular natural beads like I did here. And then I just added one of the candy cane tassels that we made earlier. I also did a ghost where I put trick or treat on it with some paint markers. And here's a fun trick that I like to do with beaded garlands. You could use Dollar Tree beads or ones you get from any other craft store. You could put some Rit dye into a glass bowl and dye them instead of having to paint them. I put them in for seven minutes. I flip the strands and then I wait another seven minutes and I was able to get a orange and black strand that I could then string up with these fun little ornaments. And they are just really fun to throw on a pumpkin, real or fake, and just finish out a vignette and add some pops of color. That's gonna do it for today's video. As always, head down to the comments and let me know what your favorite project was today. And also while you're down there, be sure to click the link to head over to Courtney's video. Let her know I sent you and also be sure to comment and let her know your favorite project on her video. We love hearing from you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.